Here with Reaction, former Vice President of the United States, Mike Pence is back with us. Sir, welcome back. It's great to see you. Thank you, Sean. Um, uh, I'd like to have the adults back in action and working. That would be good. Let me, let me start with this question. Did you ever imagine in our lifetime that we would ever see a president of the United States, because I know you wouldn't do it. I know Donald Trump wouldn't do it. I know Mike Pompeo wouldn't do it. Abandon fellow Americans mm. 13 days after promising that he wouldn't abandon any, any Americans. You ever see that happening? Let me just be very clear on this point, Sean, for your viewers. The Biden administration's disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan was the greatest foreign policy debacle since the Iran hostage crisis, and it never had to happen. Uh, the deal that our administration negotiated. Uh, actually uh, was, was finished in February of 2020. That was just a matter of weeks uh, after President Trump had given the order to take out Qasem Soleimani. It was just a few months uh, after we had uh, eliminated the ISIS caliphate and taken down Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. And the president made it clear, and I was in the Oval Office when he was speaking to Mullah Baradar, that they would either keep the deal to work with the Afghan government, to not harm any American personnel in Afghanistan and not be a safe harbor for terrorists, or we would hit them harder than we'd ever hit them before. And as evidence that they took us seriously, we went 18 months without a single American casualty in Afghanistan. But weakness arouses evil, Sean, and there's no question that the weakness evidenced by the Biden administration, I would say beginning when they were silent, when thousands of rockets were rained down on our cherished ally Israel from Hamas, sent a signal into Afghanistan that we would not respond. Uh, and you saw, as you said earlier, you saw the Taliban march into Mazar al-Sharif and then just simply, uh, simply walk into Kabul. Uh, and I, I just, I, I really want people to know that I believe with all my heart that this never had to happen. I, my, I, I grieve for the 13 service members who were lost. Karen and I prayed and spent time with the family of Corporal Humberto Sanchez from Logansport, Indiana. Uh, we, 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 it, it's hard for me to say it, but it just didn't have to happen. But it's just, it's an example of what weak leadership means on the world stage. And it's such a contrast to the, to the heavy-handed leadership of this administration at home. We have, we have a president who is weak abroad, but is very content to be lecturing the American people about vaccine mandates and attempting to drive through the Congress what would be not just the largest largest spending bill in the history of the country, Sean, it would be the largest tax increase in the history of the country that the Joint Taxation Committee in Congress just said would raise taxes in just a matter of a few years uh, on Americans who make over $40,000 a year. We have got to dig in, tell the story of what they're doing. Uh, and uh, I truly do believe that the voice of the American people can turn back this massive, uh, big government socialist bill, and, uh, and I'm doing my level well, best to travel to that the country and share the story. I want to stay on one issue first, and I have this confirmed by Secretary of State Pompeo, Mark Meadows, and, and others. I don't know if you heard the calls, and if you did, what you can share with us, I'd like to know, that before any deal was ever discussed in terms of uh, America's withdrawal from Afghanistan, that it was made very clear by the president, Donald Trump, that if they don't follow right. every period, right. comma, dotted I and cross T, let me be clear, he said he would obliterate them over and over again. It included a conditions on the ground base withdrawal. It included America keeping Bagram Air Base forever, strategically important location, China, um, and that in fact, it was said over and over again. What happened to the caliphate, Soleimani, al-Baghdadi and associates, the al-Qaeda leader in Yemen will happen to you. Do you understand? Did you hear those calls? I was standing across the resolute desk from President Trump when he talked on the speakerphone to Mullah Baradar of the Taliban in February 2020. 
And he said, look, uh, we all want to end the violence. And, and, you know, I share the conviction that the vast majority of Americans believe that we wanted, we wanted to get our troops home, but we wanted to do it with honor. We wanted to do it in an orderly way, and we wanted to leave behind uh, the kind of conditions that would be reflective of the enormous service and sacrifice of our troops over the last 20 years. And the president made it clear. He said, if you break this deal, we're going to hit you harder than we have ever hit you before. He added, he said, I don't like saying that, but he said, I, I just want you to know. And I could hear in Mullah Baradar's voice uh, that he knew President Trump meant business. And, and then you see this administration come in. They moved the, the date for the withdrawal uh, beyond the spring and into the fighting season, first incomprehensibly saying on September 11th. But I have to tell you, the idea that we abandoned Bagram Air Base in the middle of the night without telling our allies, and worst of all, that we left Americans and American allies behind was unconscionable. Uh, and, and I have to tell you that, that the generals uh, that have been testifying before the Congress, uh, the focus on all the advice the president got, the American people know the buck stops on the president's desk. And I believe that the people of this country, in the days ahead, the weeks ahead, the elections ahead, uh, well, are going to hold Joe Biden accountable for the disastrous withdrawal. Can I say one more thing, though, Sean? Yes, sir. That, that nothing of, of the current commander in chief's failings in Afghanistan. And I want to say this from my heart to every veteran who served there and the families of our fallen. Nothing of the disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan by Joe Biden will ever diminish the service and sacrifice of all of our, our service members over the last 20 years who went to Afghanistan and defended our freedom. They will be honored forever in the annals of the history of this country. And God bless them all. You know, I look at the success, the policy success of the, of, of the Trump-Pence administration. I look at it. We had energy independence for the first time in 75 years. We had the lowest illegal immigration in uh, almost 40 years. Uh, the stay in Mexico policy work, the wall building work, uh, eliminating, you know, catch and release. Now it's process and release. Now we're going to have a 30-year record open borders, process, release, um, energy independence, lower taxes, less bureaucracy. The economy was booming, record low unemployment for every demographic group in the country, uh, free and fair trade, NATO paying their fair share. Uh, the world believed that the Trump administration would use force appropriately when needed, and there was a genuine fear, uh, and peace through strength worked. As you look back on all of these issues, all of this now in nine months has disappeared. It's I knew it would be bad. I tried to warn people. Right. I didn't think it would be this bad this fast. Oh, you took the words out of my mouth, Sean. I, I knew it would be bad. We worked our hearts out uh, in that campaign last year. But I didn't know it would be this bad. I mean, the truth is, from the very first day of the Biden administration, they have been working to unravel and undo all of the policies that resulted in a stronger, more secure, more prosperous America. And this latest massive uh, bill going, that they're trying to force through the Congress uh, is just the latest example of that. I mean, we cut taxes uh, on working families and small businesses and created 7 million good-paying jobs. We, we built 400 miles of border wall and negotiated with Mexico in a Remain in Mexico agreement that reduced illegal immigration by 90 percent. Now we're in the middle of the worst border crisis in American history. On my podcast that we just recorded today, I talked to Rodney Scott, who was the chief of the Border Patrol and, until about five months ago. And he said, literally, from, from Election Day forward, the rhetoric coming out of the Biden-Harris team was emboldening the cartels, emboldening people to begin the long and dangerous journey north to our border. And the crisis that you see today is a result of them unraveling our policies that were working at the border uh, and the messages that they have been sending south of the border. And I, I just, I have to tell you, on one issue after another, I'm, I'm absolutely convinced uh, that uh, the American people can see that in our administration, 
We were putting common sense, conservative principles into practice. Our nation, our border was more secure, our economy more prosperous, our liberties more secure, with 300 judges on our, Supreme, on our courts and three on the Supreme Court. And now the American people can see this big government socialist agenda, writ large, open borders, higher taxes, a weak and apologetic foreign policy. And I got to tell you, Sean, I know we got a couple of elections this fall in, in places like uh, Virginia and, and New Jersey, and we got some big elections next year. And I think we're going to get it all back because I think the I American people right. see our record. Uh, they see their record of, of liberalism and incompetence. And I think the American people are going to take the reins, turn this country around, and uh, we're going to win back the Congress in 2022, and then we're going to win back America in 2024. You know, I know a lot has been made over the disagreement you had with the president as it relates to January 6. My sources, my understanding are, is that you two have a, a strong relationship to this day. What is your relationship with the president? Look, you can't spend uh, almost five years in a political foxhole without somebody, without, without developing a strong relationship. And, uh, you know, January 6 was a tragic day uh, in the history of our Capitol uh, building. But uh, thanks to the efforts of uh, Capitol Hill police, federal officials, the Capitol was secured. We finished our work. Uh, and the president and I sat down a few days later and talked through all of it. I can tell you that we parted amicably at the end of the administration, and we've talked a number of times since we both left office. But, but I believe that our entire focus today should be on the future. I've campaigned a couple of times for Glenn Youngkin, who will be a great governor in the state of Virginia. I've been traveling all across this country, helping our team, running for the House and the Senate, and I'll be helping governor's candidates around America. So I, I, know, the, I know the media wants to distract from the Biden administration's failed agenda by focusing on one day in January. They want to use that one day wow. to try and demean uh, the, the, the character and intentions of 74 million Americans who believed we could be strong again and prosperous again and supported our administration in 2016 and, and 2020. But for our part, I, I truly believe we all ought to remain completely focused on the future. That's where I'm focused, and I, I really well, I do want believe, a commission too. I believe, the, I believe the future is bright. I want to commission also on the 534 riots that took place in 2020, the ones where Kamala Harris was promoting bail funds to get the rioters out that killed dozens of Americans, injured thousands of police officers pelted with bricks, rocks, bottles, and Molotov cocktails. Mr. Vice President, we hope you come on regularly. Thank you for being with us. We appreciate you being back. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.